else. So now it's like I'm my show is turned into lifting the veil and the sovereign movement um, <laughs> because I I mean honestly I I have just been doing this show as kind of like winging it and whatever comes to me and the sovereign thing is just coming to me like crazy now so that I can't ignore it at all whatsoever and I have that need to constantly see what's down the rabbit hole next in the sovereign um, sphere we'll say well, so I mean I'm thank you both of you for coming on the show uh, Derek has given me some absolutely fantastic ideas about gaining property for next to no money completely legitimately that have had other people looking at me like I have three heads and I just can't wait till I go and do it myself and then laugh at everybody that looked at me like I had three heads yeah but you know what it's just, it's just like what I said on the the other night there you know what let them get pissed off let them fucking get mad you know what ignorance of the law is of no excuse you want to bitch at me? Fine. I'm the one sitting up in the house not paying property taxes, having all this shit for free, doing what I was meant to be. And while you're over there fucking slaving off to the whole world and not doing a fucking damn thing about it. Exactly. So as far as I'm concerned, I think, I've, uh, I think I'll be uh, in a better position to do that. No, definitely. And you're, and you're showing an example. And I mean, for myself, okay... Um, I'm, I'm, my family comes first. I love my kids. They drive me crazy. I love them to bits, though. They're five and ten, and I stay at home to do the best by them. But then I see my husband working his bag off to provide for us. And if we don't have, he puts it all on himself. Even if I'm doing something on the side, whether it's a little bit of catering or something else, that I, and I mean, it's just not necessarily enough. If I can do all the legwork in this with the help of people like yourself, Derek, and Dean, and then be able to say, you know, this is this could be the greatest gift I could ever give my husband. Here, I did this is the work I did and this is what I'm giving you. You can stop working now. And you can the in the capacity that you are and now you have the time to turn around and find a job that's really gonna work for you, to do work that you love to do it contracting on your own, that's what I want to be able to give to him. Because we're working hand in hand for sure. You know, but I mean, in in this capacity, in the society that we're stuck in right now, it's killing him. I see it. It's ki You know, it's not good for the family. If I can give him a little bit more, if we can work on this together, that's what I want to do. And I want to see other families be able to take advantage of that as well. Yeah, what you, yeah. You know, I don't. I want to see other people doing this. Now, I have a a friend in the chat mm. who's saying that they have a question. So, I'm going to wait until they type it. I think maybe. Um, but again, like I said, I uh, I would really like to see more people taking advantages of this and realizing that no, in fact, you're not slaves. That you don't have to live this kind of life the way that you are. And, and that there are ways around it. And yeah, it's going to take a little bit of work, but it's going to be worth it because what are you doing now? Sitting and watching TV, filling your stomach with bonbons, going to work, paying taxes, going shopping, uh, all of these things, supporting all of the corruption that's keeping you down in the first place, and then sitting there throwing your hands up in the air and saying, fuck, I hate the government, but I'm only one person and I can't do anything. Well, all of this shows that most definitely... It doesn't matter if you're one person. You can definitely do something. Because Dean's just one person. Derek's just one person. Um, now I have a question. It says, what is the story with the fee schedules? After the fee clock is started, why are there no stories of sovereigns being paid what's due? I got paid on the spot. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now that's, you're talking about the, um, the traffic ticket, yes? Yeah, well, not the, uh, not the traffic ticket, but the one I was uh, arrested for two hours. I got paid. I got paid with a personal check, five hundred bucks, and I cashed it a few minutes later. And I had to cash. Uh, cash right, it right. Home. Yeah, Derek, that's that's an extreme circumstance. You actually, the I guess uh, the sheriff is that what it was, or or the chief of police. He felt that he had civilly harmed you, and he was a man of honor, and he felt that he was obligated to uh, amend his his dishonor and he did it. That has nothing to do with contract or civil law. Yes, it is. 
Because they yeah. are he's obligated. That's a contract. Obligation is a contract. Doesn't matter how how you look well, at it. Well, he 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 is acting under the 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 uh, the situation or the guise of the, of of the public trust, and he was a he was aware of your position, and instead of him waiting to be litigated civilly after the fact, he just figured he'd he'd make an a, an agreement with you uh, at the beginning. And that, and you did. You you both went into a, a contractual agreement. He made you an offer and you accepted it. Correct? Yes. Okay, so so what what are you talking about? It is administrative. I never said anything about it administrative. I just that said that by that would me and I just missed that. that <laughs> right there. And also to add on, if if they if they most of the time they won't pay you, but most of the time if they don't pay you then you just, hey, put in an affidavit of truth. Get them to rebut it. If they can't rebut it, that's sovereign and truth. You bring that to the, bring that to any court. Court says, hey, there's a binding contract. You didn't dispute it. I can't do anything. So you either have to award judgment. I've seen it happen. Yep. i seen and it happen. I did it all- for one of my friends. He was jailed for a night. He, he went, uh, he asked my help to help take care of some of this stuff. You know what I did? I we I filed in a couple of documents. I filed in a an affidavit to him personally, and I said you got 15 days or sorry 14 days to rebut this. If you can't rebut this. You accept these terms. And the, the and the affidavit just consisted pretty much saying when I performed this, I notified you fifty thousand dollars. Did you agree? Yes. Did you proceed? Yes. Right there. That's a contract. That establishes the contract, yes. Exactly. And once you got I, I, that, and he didn't distribute it or the, or uh, put in, quote-unquote, other facts, then there you go. That is a contract. There is no adversary. There's no controversy. If there's no controversy, no adversary, then there's an agreement between the parties. If there's an agreement right. to the party, then there has to be an exchange of obligations. Since you exchange your obligation already, he has to exchange his obligation to... Um, to remedy the situation, and if they still fail to br- to uh, pay you, then you bring that you bring the that you bring that judgment, and you this and you send a copy, a certified copy, to the risk management, saying here is a judgment against this officer. You have thirty days to pay. If you don't if you don't pay within thirty days, then I will liquidate assets equal to that value. There you go. Yeah, I have a. A question. Um, someone's asking, I want to A4V my car payment. Best source for doing this correctly. Oh, Perfect. boy. Um, people have to understand. You have to wait till you get a statement. Yeah. Y- y- yeah. Okay. I'm going to let Derek talk. take that one for a sec, I guess, then. Uh, okay. <laughs> Give me the lead way. Okay. An A4V can't work on, like... Um, on payments, okay, A4V is not exactly works the way that people like it like it to work. Yeah. So let's say you know you get like a if if you get um like a, a demand for rent, right? You can't A for V your landlady or your landlord. You can't A for V for the initial contract stating you know saying hey we want we need a deposit, right? If you go for a car and you expect to pick up a car with an A for V, good luck because you ain't going to go anywhere. Now, you can go and drop off a three grand or whatever, you know, doing conventional lease or semi-conventional lease. Then, yeah, you drop off three grand, get the car, when they send you the, or as soon as you go home, you dem- or you request them to send you a statement for the full amount going. Then you there you go, a buyout. Exactly. You buy that contract out with an A for V. And when you do the A for V, you got to make sure you know where to send it off. A lot of people don't know where, what the fuck they are doing. You know, very few people knows what the hell, how to take care of an A for V. And chances are, they're not speaking publicly. That's why I never told anyone about how to do the A for V. When I send, when I send people my documents, it's a before and after picture. I don't show what the, what the A for V is, because that's a private remedy. When people start doing it, they might fuck it up, and then they have to fucking cause more trouble for me. You know, I got a good thing going. 
Yeah, yeah. The, okay. the, the A Sorry. for B, if, if, if you read the Bill of Exchange Act, you realize real quick that even writing accepted for value is irrelevant. Um, you can just write accepted on a document. But even then, if you read the Bill of Exchange Act, it'll tell you that even just your signature alone is evidence of acceptance of the document. Exactly. So well, the AFE thing doesn't really do anything more than what just what your signature does. There, there's other for, there's other things that work there that if you're not doing the process properly, um, it's not going to work for you. There's a, there's a, and I'm not even going to get into the process of what all that is. Maybe we can cover that in another show sometime or something. Uh, but it has to come down to uh, and th there's a reason they call that administrative remedy. And uh, the only person that can settle the accounts is the administrator. So sure. that's why I, I cannot sure. express enough to people why they have to learn administrative law and learn how to be administrators of their estates because only the administrator can do these things. What proper okay, now one last question, I think. Um, new listener, long-time debt payer. I have a massive student loan, and they've been in collections for two years, and me paying $500 a month in interest. I listened to the show the other day, and Derek mentioned you need an A for V, once again. Now, I also listened to Menard on the three letters to write, and you guys said you were saying that it was bunk. Just wondering how I go about with this A for V, what steps I have to take. I've paid $15,000 interest on a $60,000 loan, one with Ontario government, Royal Bank, and federal government. How would I go about abolishing all three with this A for V? Um, goes on to say you guys are amazing, and thank you. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll let yeah, the master thanks. of getting rid of student loans answer for that one. Yes, please, yeah. Derek. So I sent, so I sent the scan 0003. That's, uh, that's my student loan being taken care of, six grand, round the spot. Amount doesn't really matter at all, okay? Um, now, you can do the A4V at any time you want. You just got to know who needs it and what kind of uh, process is there. You can't expect to uh, send the A for V um, to like the uh, receiver general because you, ha you haven't assigned a duty to them, or you have to uh, you have to assign a mandate to them that is within their jurisdictional powers. And if you don't know how to do that, then fuck, you're not going to go anywhere. So you need to read how administrative processes work. If you haven't read that and you don't understand how administrative processes work and administrative remedies work, then shit, you are not going to go anywhere. Because you think the CRA is just going to look at this A for B and take it and take care of it? No. They're going to test you. They're going to say, hey, we don't know what the fuck this is. Can you explain uh, to me how this works? Yeah. And you know what? A lot of people are going to say, well, fuck, I don't know how to explain it. I guess I'm fucked. I was just told to write this and it would work. Yeah. So if there you, you read go. the Bill of Exchange Act and you could quote some of the stuff from the Bill of Exchange Act, they'd know, oh, shit, this guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah, or put in something. Put it in something. Just don't ignore it. If you ignore it, then bam, you just accept it and agree to a new contract. Yep. You got, you got to know, you have to, you have to have a certain mentality to take care of this. But for example, if you send an A for B on a student loan or whatever, and then they send you a new statement, and you don't do anything with that, bam, you just fuck yourself over. Now you got A for B that too. The, the way I do it, okay, the way I do it, and this is generally applicable for almost a lot of, pretty much everything, is you send an A for B, or you send in your administrative remedy, okay, it could be any administrative remedy that you, uh, that you claim that you have enough knowledge for. I'm not saying, you know, people, whatever, anyways, I'm moving on. <laughs> so, would you, so would you send in your administrative remedy, okay, and you send it to the appropriate office, and they come back saying, hey, we don't know what the, we, what you're talking about, right? And they send you back a new statement, and you do nothing with it, you just accept a new contract. So what you got to do is you got to do A for B the first time. If they send you another one, you send it back with another A for B. Okay, I'm using A for B just an example for the administrative remedy. Okay? So you do it two more times just in case if they didn't get the first one. Because there are, there's always a chance that they might screw up and lost, lost the first one. So you give them a chance to, uh, to uh, reprocess it again. So you send them a second time.